Hi, this is Mr. Goma, and this video is predicting products of chemical reactions, practice problems. As with the first video we had on predicting products of chemical reactions, we'll go through these three steps to figure out the products. First, we'll determine what goes with what, then we'll figure out the subscripts on the products that we've formed, and last, we'll balance the overall equation. So, let's get right to it. Our first example is C3H8 plus O2. And step one, of course, is determine what goes with what. We want to figure out the arrangements of the atoms with each other on the product side. Okay, like before, we're going to do that using a table of different reaction types. So the key thing with this reaction here is to realize that C3H8 is a hydrocarbon. It's got some number of carbons and then some number of hydrogens bonded together. So we've got a hydrocarbon plus O2 plus oxygen. So this is gonna be a combustion reaction. Lots of folks, when they see this, see, ah, I've got an A and a B plus another substance, C. So A, B plus C, and they wanna make this into a single replacement reaction. But actually, you gotta look out for the hydrocarbon plus oxygen. That's one that you just gotta be familiar with, and that's a combustion reaction. You'll notice that the products for combustion reactions are always carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. So we'll go ahead and put CO2 and H2O as our products for this reaction. So we've got CO2 and H2O. All right, so step two, as you know, is to determine the subscripts on the products. Well, one nice thing about a combustion reaction is that the subscripts are already given to us. Notice CO2. We already know that carbon dioxide has one oxygen, or sorry, one carbon and two oxygens. Same thing with water. H2O, we already know the subscripts for this compound here. So if you ever have a combustion reaction, determining the subscripts, really straightforward, it, you've already got it. So what we can do now is move on to step three, which is balancing the overall equation. And I've got us started on this one here. As you can see, We've got three carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens. Notice that the oxygens are split between carbon dioxide and water on the product side. So I kept them split here with a total to make things a little bit more straightforward. All right, so let's take a look here. Why don't we take a look and balance the carbons first? So what I need is three carbons. And if I put a three coefficient here, I'll get three carbons. And notice that will also change the number of oxygen in carbon dioxide. So three times two is six. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our hydrogens, which are out of balance. I need eight total. So two times four will give me eight, which means I need a four coefficient here. And four times one for the oxygen is four. So six plus four gives me 10 total oxygens in the carbon dioxide and the water. So 10 total oxygens. So I need 10 here, and two times five gives me 10, therefore I need a five coefficient here. So there we go. We balanced this equation, that was the last step. The key thing with these reactions is you gotta make sure you're predicting the correct products, and the thing we did here was we identified that C3H8 was a hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon plus oxygen will always give you CO2 and H2O. All right, let's go ahead and get into our next example. Here we go. So we've got MgNO32 plus Na2CO3. All right, first step is what goes with what? All right, so in this here, uh, let's bring back our list of chemical, uh, types of chemical reactions, and we can take a look at what we're gonna have. So we got our list here, uh, and what we wanna do with these, because we don't see a hydrocarbon, is that we wanna go ahead and do our letter pattern. All right, so let's go ahead and do our letter pattern here. So MG is gonna get an A. Now, the key thing to notice about this NO3 here is that it's in parentheses. And when you've got something in parentheses, it's gonna be a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ions tend to get moved around in chemical reactions. So we're gonna call the whole nitrate a B. So we have AB plus. Na is our next element. That's a C, and notice CO3 is another polyatomic ion, that's carbonate, and that's gonna be a D. 
so an arrow. So we have A, B plus C, D. Well, let's take a look at our types of reactions. We can say A, B plus C, D. That's going to be a double replacement reaction. Remember, in a double replacement reaction, the ions switch places with one another. So we're going to get A, D plus C, B. So let's go ahead and uh, put that down. All right, so we have A, D plus C, B. All right, so I'm going to write down what we form right down here so that we can uh, see it a little bit more easily. All right, so A, D, that means magnesium is going to be with the carbonate. and CB, so the sodium is going to be with the nitrate. All right. Okay, so we've done that. We figured out what goes with what. The next step is going to be to determine the subscripts on these new products that we formed here. Okay, and when we're determining the subscripts, what we want to do is make sure that if we have ionic compounds, we're going to balance those ionic compounds for charge. And of course, we definitely do have ionic compounds here. Double replacement reactions occur in ionic compounds. These are polyatomic ions, nitrate, NO3, and carbonate, CO3, 2 minus, so we've got to have ionic compounds. So let's pull out a periodic table and make sure we can get the charges on magnesium and carbonate and sodium and nitrate. So first off, let's go with magnesium. Let's pull this up here a little bit. So magnesium, Mg is right here on the periodic table. It's in group two. So it's gonna get a two plus charge. And let's go ahead and figure out sodium. Sodium is over here in group one. It gets a one plus charge. All right. And we can look up here to figure out if you don't have these memorized already, the uh, charges on the two polyatomic ions. The carbonate, if we've got one carbonate and two sodiums, and we know sodium's got a one plus charge, that means the carbonate has to have a two minus charge. And let's take a look at the nitrate over here. We know magnesium has a two plus charge. We figured that out right here. And so therefore, if we have two nitrates, that means each of these gotta have a one minus charge. All right. So we figured out the charges on our compounds. And what we see here is that actually, with one magnesium and one carbonate, we've got a balanced compound. And with one sodium and one nitrate, we've got a balanced compound. So it turns out that we don't need to add any more of each of these in order to make a balanced ionic compound. So great, having done that, let's go on to step three, which is balancing the overall equation. Here we go. So one thing I want to point out here is that I got us started by writing down each of the ions as opposed to breaking up the polyatomic ions. Because remember, in double replacement reactions, the polyatomic ions and the other ions just switch places with one another. So uh, this is a shortcut that you can do to balance equations that have polyatomic ions in them, so long as the ions are just switching places and nothing's getting decomposed. All right, so we got one magnesium, two nitrates, two sodiums, and one carbonate on the reactant side. Product side, one magnesium, one carbonate, that's down here. Uh, over here we've got one sodium, and NO3 is nitrate, we've got one nitrate. So this is actually going to be pretty straightforward to balance. It looks like the nitrate and the sodium are out of balance. We just need to put a two coefficient here and that'll make each of these a two. And now we're balanced, okay? So there we go. We predicted the products of a double replacement reaction and we balanced the reaction. Let's keep going. Our next example is Al plus O2. Okay, so what goes with what? So let's go ahead and take a look at our reaction types here. Just remind ourselves, these are our reaction types. We should hopefully fit this pattern here. And one thing we'll notice immediately is that Al and O2, there's no hydrocarbon, so we can just go ahead and do the letter pattern. 
So A plus B forms. So A plus B. And if we look over here, we're going to see A plus B forms. That is emblematic of a synthesis reaction where A and B come together to form a single product. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to get AB together, which is going to be A, well, A, B. And so that means we're going to have A, L, O. All right. So we've done step one. So let's go ahead to step two now, which is going to be predicting uh, what the subscripts are on the equation here. So one thing you've got to look out for with these here is do you have an ionic compound? Because remember, we must balance ionic compounds for charge. So let's get our periodic table and figure out with ALO what we have. Do we have an ionic compound? So aluminum, left side of the staircase right here. So aluminum is going to be a metal. Oxygen, right side of the staircase. So it's a non-metal. So we do in fact have an ionic compound and we will need to balance for charge. So let's go right ahead and figure out what the charges are on Al and O. Al is in group 13, so it's gonna be a three plus ion. I'll write this down right here. We have a little bit more room. And O is in group 16, it's gonna be a two minus ion. All right, so three plus and two minus. For this example here, I'll do a swap and drop to balance the equation or sorry, balance the compound. So great, so that means we're gonna have two aluminums with a three plus charge, Al2, and it's gonna be three oxygens. And the charge would balance because three times negative two is gonna give you minus six, and two times positive three is gonna be positive six. That's gonna balance. Great, so now we predicted that Al and Ox O are gonna to be together, aluminum and oxygen, and their compound they're gonna form is Al2O3. Let's go ahead and balance the equation. All right, here we go, got this started for us. So let's just keep track of what we have. So we start out with one aluminum and two oxygens. We end up with two aluminums and three oxygens, all right. I'm gonna start out by balancing the oxygen because it's a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and see, first off, if we can get even numbers on both sides, because uh, obviously this can only go up in units of two. So if I put a two coefficient here, then that will give me two times three would be six oxygen and also four aluminums. So now this should be pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and just do the aluminum. So I'm gonna need a four coefficient here and that gets me four, and two times three is six, so I need a three coefficient there. Okay, so there we predicted the products of aluminum and oxygen coming together, and we made sure to balance the charge in the ionic compound to get Al2O3. Let's keep going. Next one here, NaBr plus F2. Okay, so first thing I notice, no hydrocarbons. So I can go ahead and just do the letter pattern and figure out what that's gonna be. So Na, first thing I get to is A, Br, B, plus F is gonna be a C. All right, so A, B, plus C. You might already be able to recognize this kind of reaction. A, B, plus C is a single replacement reaction, okay? And remember, with single replacement reactions, the A is gonna kick something out in the compound. And depending on whether it kicks out A and B, we need to do another step here to figure out what A kicks out, what replaces what. So let's figure that out right now. All right. So when we did single replacement reactions the other video, we remembered these rules here. So metals replace metals and non-metals replace non-metals. So in order to figure out, is this F here going to be kicking out the Br, or is it going to be kicking out the Na? We're going to have to analyze for metals and nonmetals. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So let's start with Na. Na is over here. It's in group one. It's a metal. Br over here in group 17. It's a non-metal. And F is also in group 17. It's a non-metal. So we can see clearly if metals replace metals and non-metals replace non-metals, let me put the appropriate one here, 
Fluorine's a non-metal, it's gonna replace the bromine. So that means the bromine is gonna be by itself. So the Br is gonna be by itself. Uh, and the F is gonna be with the Na. So just to keep it in this order here, I'm gonna do N, A, F plus Br. Okay, so great. We're now on to step two and we can figure out the subscripts. So notice here we had a metal and non-metal and here's also with Na gets with F, it's also gonna be a metal and non-metal, remember. If you've got metals and non-metals, you've got to balance ionic compounds for charge. So let's go ahead and get the charges on Na and F so we can balance that out. Na, group one, one plus. And F, group 17, one minus. So this is actually gonna be pretty straightforward. One plus and one minus, the formula is gonna be NaF. It's gonna stay as it is. Okay, so Br is an element by itself, and we know that Br, bromine, is a non-metal. Remember, if you have non-metals and they're on their own, you've always got to check to see if it's a diatomic element. If you remember, there are seven diatomic elements, and these diatomic elements can't exist as just elements on their own, so a Br by itself, it would have to be something like uh, an F2. So if you notice, fluorine is a diatomic element. That's why when it was by itself, it had to have a two subscript. Notice, here the fluorine's not by itself. The fluorine is with sodium. It does not necessarily need a subscript if it's with another element. Okay, and notice bromine is also on our list. It's one of the seven diatomic elements. So I've got another list right here that I'll put. You remember there's a mnemonic you can use, I have no bright or clever friends, and bromine, of course, is on the list there. So we're gonna have to make our Br a Br2. And there we go. Now we predicted the products. We've got NaF, which is an ionic compound, and we balanced that. Bromine is a diatomic element. We checked, made sure there's a two subscript. Okay, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and do our last step, which is balancing the chemical equation. And again, I've got us going on this one here. So let's just uh, see what's out of balance. I see the bromines are out of balance and the fluorines are out of balance. So let's go ahead and take care of the bromine first. So we need a two coefficient here for that. So two, that's gonna change my bromine to two and also gonna change my sodium to two. All right, over here, the F is out of balance. So we need more fluorine on the product side. So if we put a two coefficient there, that does change the fluorine, and notice that also changes the sodium, the Na. And now we're all balanced. Two sodium, two bromine, two fluorine. So there we go. We balance this single replacement reaction as well. We notice that fluorine was a non-metal, and so is bromine. So fluorine kicks the bromine out, so the bromine's by itself. Now we end up with an ionic compound. We had to make sure we balance for charge, and we double check that bromine was a diatomic element. Hope these videos help. Good luck on your problems.